Good evening, welding community. Welcome to Weld.com. I'm Man Cub. Today we're just going to do a little 4F overhead with aluminum TIG. Not in our little normal testing picture. All you haters are going to like this. We're going to do it laying down on the ground and we're just going to TIG overhead. Aluminum 4F. So let's go ahead and get into it. You can see this has um, oil all over it. It's been sitting for a while. Instead of wire brushing this, a lot of people just wire brush this. Even on a clean side, people wire brush, like if you don't have no oil. I usually take acetone, put it on this, and I'm basically just clean it before I wire brush it. Before I get into wire brushing, uh, first thing you want to do is get stainless uh, wire brush here. If you don't get a stainless and use steel, well, you, use, you wire brush it with a steel brush, then I don't know, a day later or a couple days later, wherever, it'll, rust spots will start showing up everywhere. So always do a stainless steel brush for aluminum. And I always do this after, do it again. If you guys are sick of your typical nitro gloves, I just open these box. First off, I notice as soon as I open them, they're orange. I'm like, I love this color orange. And second is these grips. If you guys see these grips, that's freaking cool. I'm thinking of like mechanic work, doing stuff at home on them. And I, then I thirdly, I noticed is when I took this acetone and I like overused it and got it wet on here, you could tell it didn't shrivel up. Oops. I think that, shit, that stuff's holding up pretty good. I'm impressed. So that's pretty cool to me. And I like having gloves on my hands to protect them. If you want to pick a box of these up, camera guy's going to drop a link below. So we're using 4043 uh, 3 seconds filler wire. I do the same method as I do on my base metal. All right, so I'll basically put some acetone here. I do it more than once because if we just do it once, just look at that. Pretty bad. Or you got an oxide layer on here. I never thought of that until Red Beer brought it to my attention. I was kind of excited about that news because it's making me a better welder. So all these little things will make you a better welder and it will also make your weld look better. So you want to take into account for all these little things because you're trying to make the perfect weld. So you can see how it's not shiny anymore. It's dull. So you know you got that scuffed up when you see that dullness. If it's shiny, you know it's, it's a no-go. Keep on scratching away. I take it one more time. I take uh, on a clean part of rag one more time and wipe it. I guarantee a little bit of dirt's going to come off, just like right here, just doing this. And look, well, that's how bad it is right there. That's pretty bad. And we still wiped it down, what, total four times now. So that's good enough for me. So let's continue on setting the machine. OK, we're running off the ESOB 205 AC-DC. We're going to be running AC alter alternating current. We're gonna come up here in parameters. We wanna get into the advanced settings. So on my pre-flow, I'm gonna turn, turn it down a little bit. So I'm gonna go like two tenths of a second. Just purges out whatever air is in there in the line or anything. The post flow, I'm gonna turn that up. I'll go like eight seconds. So the hertz, I like to run about 125 hertz, 135. So that's about good there. So we're gonna go back to the main setting here. I got my balance set to 75%. Uh, electro negative, uh, 175 amps I'm going to be running on the 8th inch aluminum uh, 6061 plate. See, I told you we're going to be down and dirty this time. We're down low. Got grinding dust. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be using a 9 torch, number 5 cup, 3 30 seconds filler wire. And I'm laying on my back and I'm using a foot pedal with my foot. So let's go ahead and do this. <clears throat> so we want to light up on our tack. Uh, warm up our tack, get the puddle the size you want it for the joint that you're running here. Obviously, I'm running a T-joint here. Then you want to start dabbing her and just make sure your uh, toes are wetting in pretty good here. Just keep watching it, just keep watching it. And as soon as I get like halfway or three quarters, I'm paying attention to that base metal because sometimes it will start eating away the top plate. And you just keep going and just slowly let off the pedal. This is how I know I'm running a little warm or the plate's getting hot, the, the top of the, the top plate of the T-joint, the, right in the middle of the joint, it will start like fingernailing back. You will see it like lifting up, trying to want to poke through the other side. That actually came out pretty good. I imp impressed myself. I haven't done this for a long time. I used to uh, build military communication vehicles. We, laid the, we built the walls on the side, on the ground on this big table, probably like 40 feet long. And I, I did a lot of overhead uh, MIG intake overhead on aluminum square tubing. What you're looking for and what I'm looking for here, good transition to the base plate. We don't have no like undercut or uh, lack of fusion right in here. 
and we've got no porosity through here, so we cleaned our metal pretty good. We don't have no blacking right here, so we know we cleaned our metal real good there. Then right here at your crater, we took our time and slowly backed off on the pedal. Because you don't, you don't want to just like let off the pedal real quick, because you'll leave that you know what I mean, indention in there, or pimple I call it, and then you'll have a linear crack. You might not see it with your eye, but I guarantee it's going to be there, and just like that. And over time, vibration, just by driving down the road, will actually create a, create a crack through here, a linear crack right in the middle. And I guarantee you, you'll, you will see it if you threw PT on it. And sometimes you will see it if it's big enough with your eye. On this weld right here, we use a foot pedal. You can't, you can't always use a foot pedal, so we went on Amazon, bought this switch. This is pretty cool. You got basically off here on on. You flip it on, you hear the gas, and you control your amps all the way to high and come back to low. So yeah, check this out. Uh, camera guy is going to drop a link below. So right now we're going to go ahead and give this a try. So let's do it. <laughs> All right, so that was pretty good. I haven't done it for a while. It's a good refresher course. So what we got in the weld is good tie-ins on the toes here. It's nice and wet in. Good start here. We build up good. And basically, main thing is, I haven't told you guys, I forgot, we kept consistent. Everything was the same size carrying down. That's what you want. And also, if you want to look at it, look, look down this like this, and you can tell if it's straight or not. So it looks pretty good. I hope this episode has been very helpful and everything. Learning is key. I'll see you guys next time. My name is Mankov. Thank you.